Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Ever since I stepped into my masters, people have often asked me a single question. Why are you not trying to get a degree from abroad? And by degree, they generally mean a PhD. I have answered this question in parts to several people in several ways. So I thought it's the best to put it all in one video about what are the problems which I had faced while trying to apply for a PhD abroad and why I did not ultimately go for it in the long run. So this video is all about that. Without wasting any more time, let us begin. First up, the major problem with applying abroad is of course the money. Especially in the year 2018, when I wanted to apply for the spring 2019 PhD semesters, every university had an application or an admission fee ranging from 50 to $100. That's a lot of money, right? The TOEFL exam itself was something around 12,000 rupees. The GRE general exam and the GRE subject exam, both of which I took, total came to something around 20,000. I don't exactly remember the amounts, but I do remember that the three exams in total cost me 33,000 something. And I was not earning that much at that point of time. So I had to take some money from my father. So of course, the amount of money which you are having to give out of your pocket before you even get to apply is tremendous. And while I am not saying that our family or I myself wouldn't have been able to afford it. That's not what I'm saying at this point. But in my opinion, it seemed like an unnecessary expenditure. I did not even apply to the universities in 2018, mainly because my GRE general score was not at par. Of course, I am to be held responsible for that exclusively, but that's a different story. I will come to the merit bit a little later. First of all, let's deal with the financial issues. The application fees for universities especially in the us and the uk is huge it's somewhere between 50 to 100 dollars for us and somewhere between 75 to 100 pounds for the uk so if you want to apply for say 10 universities each university takes about 10,000 rupees from you for application then for 10 universities you are just spending 1 lakh rupees on just the admission fee of course in a celebrated news this year the University of Cambridge in UK has done away with the 75 pound application fee it had for its PhD programs but that is not for all of its programs it's for very specific programs for very, very specific kind of people I will put the link for that news down in the description you can go and check that one out but that is an exception of course, these exceptions are also there in the US where universities are generally doing away with the GRE exam altogether and they're just wanting your proposal and the TOEFL exam. But the amount of money that you are giving for the TOEFL exam still remains and the application fee still remains. And all of these kept aside, let, let us assume for the time being that all goes well and you get selected. After that, you have to apply for a visa, a student visa for four to five years. That will take a huge amount of your money. And then you have to apply for a ticket, a ticket to the United States, which costs you about 60 to 70,000 rupees. All of this you have to give from your own pocket or from the pocket of your family, whichever is more convenient for you. But these are investments which no one is ever going to reimburse you for or there is a very, very slight chance of you getting this money back ever in your life. Of course, many people consider this an investment and rightly so. But one cannot deny the fact that many families and many students are not in a position to fetch out this amount from their pocket at the ages of say 23, 24, 25, 26, whatever their age may be. All of us are not equally disposed financially there is a difference in the economic status of people and there is literally no way for us to ignore that if we are ignoring that or if we are saying that that difference doesn't exist then we are being ignorant and in some ways blindsided anyway uh, that kept aside the financial part 
is more or less this much only and that was one of the main reasons why I didn't want to go ahead with it. It seemed like a dead end kind of investment for me and I was not very sure that I would get through which is one of the main reasons why I didn't apply in the year 2019. Now after I finished my MPhil in the year 2021, I did consider applying to universities abroad and now I will talk about the more nuanced thing which is about me particularly but I think many people will be able to relate to this which is the issue of merit. Now the common misconception in this context is that people who are asked to apply abroad are so meritorious that if they just apply they will get through, no questions asked. Well, this is faulty in many ways, shapes and forms. The GRE exam, the GRE general exam being one primary example of that where people are asked to solve maths even if they are the students of humanities and they are asked to solve comprehensions even if they are students of science. So this kind of a discrimination always exists. Let me give you an example from my life, something which has happened to me. I wanted to apply at the University of Oxford which happens to be a dream of many students who are wanting to pursue their higher research degrees in English and in many other subjects as well. So I went up to their website and was very excited to find someone who would be a very suitable mentor or guide for me in my proposed PhD thesis or proposal. After finding out about that person I was very excited and I exchanged some emails with her and after a point she stopped replying but let's not go into that the fact which remains in this context is that if you are pursuing your master's degree from an indian university and if it's not an institute of eminence and by the way the institutes of eminence according to the university of oxford for indian institutes are only iits and maybe a few universities here and there the university where i did my masters from jadavpur was not an institute of eminence according to them but what that means is that I needed to have a 75% in my masters in order to just apply for a PhD, leave alone get selected which I didn't have in my masters degree. Something similar happened in my bachelors degree as well. I wanted to apply for the Rhodes Fellowship. Some of you might already know about it. If you don't, I will put a link down in the description as to what the Rhodes Fellowship is, who are eligible for it and of course when I was 21 I was eligible for it. Now I am no longer eligible. People who are 23 or below can only apply for it if I am not very mistaken. So I wanted to apply for the Rhodes Fellowship back then and then I found out that I needed a 70% in my bachelor's degree in order to apply. Now I was a student of the University of Calcutta back in the non-CBCS days and getting a 70% from a Calcutta University college though my college was an autonomous one but literally no one got a 70% from our college in that year. In the next year or in the years to come people did get it but our batch was probably not so lucky which is why I was not able to apply for a Rhodes Fellowship either. Similarly, last year in 2021 I wanted to apply for the Fulbright Language Teaching Assistant FLTA and even there I found out that they were only taking language assistance for Hindi and Urdu and my mother tongue Bengali was not available as an option. My sister, my elder sister went there as an FLTA a few years ago and I took inspiration from her and wanted to go there as well. So there are always problems like these which crop up and it's very easy for you or anyone for that matter to just catch hold of someone who you think is academically inclined or who could have done well if they wanted to apply abroad to ask them why aren't you applying abroad or what is exactly stopping you. The financial reason is the main one, the meritorious reason of course in this context I'm clearly stating that I did not have enough merit to apply for the University of Oxford's PhD degree or for the Rhodes Scholarship back in the year 2017. But these issues of merit come up because of the marking systems of universities like University of Calcutta. I don't have much complaints about Jadavpur. Many people got more than me there. So I am assuming that I did not do well. But at Ramakrishna Mission Narendrapur, I got the highest in my bachelor's. And the University of Calcutta back in those days was well known for marking its humanities students lesser than they were supposed to get. I'm sure many of you already know that. So because of reasons like that, my 
abroad applications were pushed back and back and back ultimately they never ended up happening and now i have a job in kolkata for example if i want to apply for a phd in a foreign university in the next year i would have to leave my present job and go there i have made this mistake once in the year 2019 when i left my job at khidirpur college as a guest lecturer and joined delhi university for the mphil degree i'm not going to repeat this mistake again and this is my advice of course you are free to disagree with me but since our degrees most of our degrees are done with an end goal in mind to get a job if you get a job you should never leave that job in order to pursue a degree you should try and find out how you can do the do your degree alongside your job instead of leaving your job then doing your degree and coming back with the hope that one now i have a higher degree i will definitely get a better job that's not always the case the world is not a fair place of course this is not the case for everyone many people do their degrees simply because they want to do research that's absolutely fine but if you're doing your degree with the primary goal that you want to have a job in the future then i would advise you to keep that job and then think of everything else which is why i will not be applying abroad in the future as well so this was my fair share of experiences i know this channel has seen its fair share of my advice expertise and maybe a success story or two but i thought it's time to share my fair share of failure as well because life is not a bed of roses So thank you for watching if you have any questions queries doubts or comments please don't forget to leave them down below and of course don't forget to like comment share and subscribe i will see everyone in the next video till then hasta la vista